reason I'm spending so much time on the scripting and stuff is because, uh, you know, these videos, these educational ones, especially, like, I, I'm really planning on them being a resource for, like, a really long time, and I really want them to be, like, effective for, you know, like, beginner kids. So, like, I really want to make sure that the language is, like, accessible for kids and teachers, and, like, I have a lot more experience with, like, I do some teaching arts things with the orchestra, and I've done a lot of, I spent a lot of time thinking about, like, developing presentations for classrooms. So, like, I kind of approached it from that, like, be really deliberate about the language. I think with other things that I'm going to do in the future, it's going to be a lot easier. I can be a lot, a lot more fluid. So I think that's part of the reason why I, I've spent so much time on the scripting side of things. But I'm getting faster every time. You know, like, I, I know exactly how to set everything up now. I know what to look for in a scene. I know, like, how to do everything. After this, I'm going to go to the hall. I've got crazy, it's it's getting way too out of control, but I got this crazy, crazy ideas for a video about, for, for a video about addressing, like, intonation, anxiety, and performances. And uh, I have all these plans for, like, filming B-roll where, like, I'm going to act out as, like, an audition person, like, pushing a pencil, and then, like, another person back there, like, not paying attention, and then, like, me on stage, like, all this crazy stuff. <laughs> That's gonna, not going to work, I don't think, but it'll be fun. We'll see. Anytime I get to talk YouTube and video production with somebody, it's a real treat. And if they're in the bass world, that is an added bonus. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contrabass Conversations. And we're talking today with Jonathan Borden, who is a bassist in the Buffalo Philharmonic and launch what I consider to be an awesome YouTube channel. He's doing detailed tutorials about French bow technique and many other topics. He's got a great blend of humor. The production value is high. I watched the first video and I said, Jonathan, we got to chat. And then he said, let me do one one or two more videos to get my sea legs and then we'll chat. So this is the conversation you're going to hear today. We dig into all sorts of things, YouTube and cameras and that kind of sort of stuff, but also how he got to where he is and his story and background, what he's thinking about for the future with his channel and life in general, I guess, and much more. Big shout out to our sponsors, Dorico, Ear Trumpet Labs, and Modacity. More on them later, but let's dig into this conversation with Jonathan Borden. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> yeah, what's it? I, I like your Zoom background. Where? where oh, what, what am I looking at there? This is a poster that my parents got in France. They lived there for a few years. It's oh, uh, cool. Chamonix. Okay, nice. You know, my parents lived there. Actually, I lived there when I was two. <laughs> and, then, wow. and then they, you know, when you live in Europe, you can just vacation is like, start like I always think of it this way. If I drive to, you know, Ohio, it'd be the same thing in Europe if you're going from like Paris to like Spain, which is just like the coolest thing. So they went everywhere while they were there because it's so close. Well, it's it, yeah, it's crazy if you if you think about the year, continental Europe, you know, which is b roughly or, or Western Europe. I forget exactly, but it's like roughly the size of the United States, right? Yeah. And what the European Union set up, it's kind of similar, but five hundred million people. But yeah. unlike going from ca California to Oregon, yeah, you're going <laughs> yeah. To, to this totally different, totally different culture, uh, culture like... world, going back centuries, different language, different. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's so crazy. And and you go over there. I don't know if you spent much time in Europe, but it's just it's such a different feel. Than yeah. here, we're like Ohio to Indiana, whatever. I mean, they're yeah. they're they're different. I know, but sure. it's it's just interest uh, interesting how uh, yeah. yeah how uh, how vast uh, an experience you can have. Yeah, I wish I could spend more time there. Obviously not right now, but just in general, like I would kill for a like a orchestra exchange program where I could just go live there for a few years and learn the language and do that kind of thing. That's what my parents did. My dad just worked for IBM and he got to go there for six years. So it's like, wow. man, I wish we had those kinds of opportunities in, in this industry. Yeah, right. Well, we, my wife and I've had this had this fantasy. Or it's not even a fantasy. We could e easily do it. Moving to Australia, um, she's a doctor, and they they it's it's easy to you know they they would welcome her. Um, but the, you know the the Western Europe's one thing because um, you're so connected to the rest of the world. But my goodness, you start to really think about the practicalities of Australia, and it's yeah. like, all right, the, the quick the quickest flight to either the U.S. or Europe is where I am, San Francisco, and that's 17 hours. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's uh, just total opposite yeah, side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's so it's such. I don't know if you've been to Australia. I haven't. It's on my to do list. It's great, and it's especially funny living here in California and going there because we have the same vegetation. So you get on this flight, you leave. Uh -huh. It's se seventeen hours of ocean, and you land, yeah. and it's like you never left because we we stole all their plants, you know, and we have so we have all these eucalyptus and yeah. and bottle brush trees and all that right. sort of stuff all over I the area. That. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, where are you? Where are you from originally? I am from a little town in Connecticut called Bridgefield, which is like an hour and twenty minutes away from New York City, in the southwestern corner okay. of the state. Okay. Did you stay? Did you grow up there? Your whole yep. so high school and the whole deal? Yeah, okay. yeah. I we I moved there when I was four, and that's yeah, high school, everything, bass lessons, everything was. That's where it all. That's where it all started for me, really. That's where it all started. Okay, <laughs> yeah. cool. Well, I love your YouTube channel. I love. Yeah, I can't, nice. keep it. Keep it up, sir. Those are great videos. <laughs> I love I love that workout montage where you got the bow and you're, <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right. All right. I got a little <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can I don't know if you can get carried away. That's a, that's a, had you been thinking about doing that for years and you just got, get, you got locked away for a, for a, yeah. for a pandemic and got going with it? Uh, I, you know, honestly, anytime I, you know, I consume YouTube as much as the next person does. So, you know, the thought always crosses your mind when you're watching some channel that you really like. And there's some great ones out there, especially of musicians from all different backgrounds. So the thoughts crossed my mind, but up until this year, it was kind of always like, oh, I don't have something like that people would want to see. You know, that's kind of what I figured was like, oh, it's not worth it because, you know, you're a classical musician and like how many how many people are going to want to watch a classical musician talk about that like it's a small market i thought but you know i think what the pandemic has done has has helped me kind of be like well it's worth a shot and i had because i have the time now and you know my attitudes changed a little bit you know like i guess maybe all it was was the time but with that time now i can be like well maybe i can turn it into something maybe i can create things that you know i can i can i guess i think i'm a little bit more willing to you know have something not work and be okay with that and like and, and, and improve upon it you know whereas I think before I, I just kind of like I shot a lot of things down because I was just like ah you know I just found I found reasons not to do something I think that's the biggest change for me is that like now I think like yeah I'm gonna give that a shot I'm gonna give it a try and like you know maybe it won't work out and you know if not no big deal you still come out of it learn having learned something that you didn't know before so that's kind of where yeah. I'm at with it well, it's great. Your your stuff's great right out of the gate. It's oh, it's fun to see. I, I I've never been ashamed to put out extremely not good content over the years. So I, <laughs> I have a, this h hilariously long, you know, time. I've never really taken YouTube seriously. I always thought of it as like a garbage fire um, oh. in terms of what I did. But you know, I did these videos with one of the lyric opera bassists back in uh -huh. the mid two thousands. I was shooting on this two megapixel Canon Pexma yeah. with the internal <laughs> microphone. It's like, yeah. <laughs> You know, some of those have gotten like quarter million views no, and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it, well, the, yeah, it's, and, and the, I had to cut it up into 10 minute chunks because you couldn't upload more right. than 10 minutes. This is like yeah, good remember. old, good old. Yeah. And so it's, it's been fun. I, I finally, in 2019, I thought I started to watch, I think it was travel backpack videos of all things. I, mm -hmm. I started to like get more into watching YouTube. I never really yeah. did it before. And yeah. I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll give this a try. And I, I ended up going down the rabbit hole and buying some camera gear, you know, and I'm always thinking about buying new camera. I have to resist the urge to like know, buy I'm new just, gear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cause yeah. you're shooting on good gear. What are, what are you shooting on? I, uh, I, yeah. I'm just curious. I, I got a Canon M50. I just, it was like, oh, you did. Yeah, it's just yeah, like it seemed like that's that what was I'm the, shooting on. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it just seemed like a good like you know you don't know anything about cameras like this is for you you'll learn on this thing you know yeah yeah it's a good get your feet wet camera because yeah. it's like retails what I don't know. 600 bucks 600, there, yeah. plus or minus yeah. yeah and and you can get a couple lenses or get a microphone yeah. and you're not breaking the bank it's tough because there's that camera and then the next price point up is like 1600 yeah something. like double that and it's like well yeah yeah, and then it's like three thousand or something, yeah. and then you can. So, so it's it's one of those. Okay, so we're we're using the exact same thing. Okay, okay, that's good. Cool. I, yeah, I, well, I, I, don't, I haven't really talked to anybody about it, so I, I I wasn't sure. I mean, I felt pretty good about the purchase, but it's good to know that somebody else is using that too. And, well, what, and, what I've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no. what, what I've been doing because I, I started buying a bunch of lenses. So what yeah. I have settled on for like my talking headshots is this mm -hmm. twenty two millimeter lens that they that they uh, yeah, make for that. Um, yeah, I also have a twenty two oh, millimeter. You, the Viltrox. Oh, using, it's like a new one. Uh, Viltrox twenty two millimeter. It goes f one point four. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. All right. That's that's great. Well, your stuff looks great. I was so I was nice. curious what um I figured you were using something besides the kit. We're getting super camera heavy right <laughs> off the bat, but that's okay. That's what I, wanted. I I never get to talk with anybody about this sort of stuff. <laughs> um, I also got the Rode VideoMic Pro mm -hmm. for the top of the camera just for because I was thinking I was going to be like some double bass vlogger walking around 
in yeah. and at conferences, which I may end up being. I've yeah. just been trapped at home for yeah, 13 awesome. months. Yeah. yeah, I had like I had, I bought I bought that and I bought some other gear and I filmed a grand total of one event and then the pandemic hit. But I got good footage. I, I went to the Pittsburgh Double Bass Symposium mm -hmm. and I also got a 50 millimeter prime lens, the Nifty 50, and mm -hmm. I got whatever the adapter you need. And mm -hmm. that thing is outstanding. Oh, nice. Okay. It, it, in indoors for concerts like i can get really good footage with that and uh -huh. and so now i i'm trying to decide because i'm trying to get my gear down so that i can fit it in a bag and still like travel like a normal person yeah, so yeah so i'm thinking but i i like it and i in in non-pandemic times i go to a lot of base events so i wanted something small but that i could get actual concert footage of because sometimes it's like you know people would love to have some footage of their concerts or that right. sort of thing so um i also got the 11 to 22 millimeter that sort of like vlogger type lens uh -huh. um i don't know if you've picked that like a from him, from like Sigma, maybe? no this this oh. is directly from can oh, okay. okay. yeah which is good i think i think for like vlog style content when you yeah. want a wide background i think that's yeah. good it is not a great light uh lens indoors oh. it's it's pretty grainy pretty quick so okay. i still use it though sometimes if i just want to get like me and the base in the yeah. frame and have the camera close yeah I, to me it was important to get the, like the widest lens possible without breaking the bank because the widest and the, the they called it fast but with the widest aperture because mm -hmm. I live in a pretty tiny apartment and mm -hmm. you know to get a shot of me in the whole base you know I have to put and, and the, the Canon M50 is a crop sensor so it's already zooming things in yep. so like I, I wanted to get something as wide as possible so that I could fit you know so I could get a shot of me playing in my apartment mm -hmm. without having my camera have to be like in the next apartment over you know <laughs> <laughs> so so that combination seems to work pretty well i i kind of i couldn't justify it at the time and so i understand why i did it but i kind of wish i had a full full frame sensor camera yeah just for that extra width but no, no, no I, I'm, I'm making it work right now that's what i keep debating late at yeah. night on amazon yeah. i haven't pressed the button i don't want to get i don't i've already spent enough on this on this crop sensor i, yeah. I i'm a, I, i'm allowed to in the heath household but i just yeah. i need to I, I i my camera is not what's holding me back i i, yeah. I would say you know so at yeah. some point i'll probably pull the trigger on that but what are you doing in terms of what are you using for a mic i know you're mic'd up in some of these videos I, what, what are you using yeah i use like a pretty cheap i actually just replaced it but i, I was using the brand was power device it's like 30 dollar thing i got on amazon a lavalier mic because I, I bought that and a shock mount camera mic mm -hmm. by tascam and i tested them both i still have that shock mount one you know my apartment it's not treated you know like I, i've got a carpet and that's about it you know so like mm -hmm. i was hearing a lot of new room noise with the with yeah. the massive camera so i was like well let's just do this lapel lavalier thing instead and it's, it's coming out way better but i think i accidentally broke it like i remember i accidentally like stepped on the cord once and so i was getting this humming in my videos and luckily my dad had really expensive software on his machine that could get rid of that that i couldn't figure out how to get rid of but um i just upgraded to a zoom f1 or l1 i can't remember which one it is but it's it's a it's a lav mic that goes into a device that you can clip on like the back of your belt so that i'm not oh. having to plug into my camera because like when i was filming my latest one where i was like there's a shot of me my whole base and the camera's like 10 feet away like the lav mic is like hanging across the room you know yeah. and i'm trying to fit yeah. around my base and, and i'm like worried about pulling my camera down and stuff off the tripod mm -hmm. so it was like i needed a better solution and, and for some reason i couldn't get that to work with my phone the lapel mic it my phone wasn't picking up a signal and there's all these things about trs and trrs and like and neither one works with my phone for some reason so i was like let me just buy a device that i know is going to work this episode is brought to you by Ear Trumpet Labs. They make an incredible mic for upright bass called the Nadine. And six-time Grammy-winning jazz bassist and former Contra Bass Conversations guest, Christian McBride is a big fan. Christian says, as an acoustic bassist, it's very important for me to have this instrument amplified as naturally as possible. What I love about this microphone is that it makes the instrument sound exactly how I hear it in my head. Honestly, I don't know if you can get a better review than that. The Nadine is an instrument-mounted condenser mic with an incredibly clear natural sound and great feedback rejection. Ear Trumpet Labs is offering a free t-shirt with mic purchase from their website. Just visit www.eartrumpetlabs.com slash contrabass to claim yours and learn more about Nadine.
This episode is brought to you by Dorico, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. And one of the coolest things about this piece of software, there's so many things, but one of them is their popover option. And it has sped up things so much for me when I'm working in scores. Here's senior product manager Daniel Spreadbury on how popover mode works. There's like hundreds of notations that you might want to create and trying to remember what to type, you know, oh, is it command shift alt, you know, Vulcan death grip seven <laughs> for this particular notation. <laughs> but the nice thing about popover is all you have to remember is the letter of the thing you want to create. So D for dynamics. T for tempo, M for meter, K for key signature. It might seem like a simple thing, but you would not believe how much that has sped up my workflow. And I'm not even really a composer. I do a lot of arrangements. I do a lot of exercises, but it has taken my workflow probably at least up to five times faster. Just that one mode. I can't say enough good things about Dorico. I love it. I use it every single day. There's a free version, Dorico SC, that you can download that lets you do practically everything for up to two stabs so check it out dorico.com will take you to their page on steinberg's website and thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast i'll have to check that out that's yeah. cool i i i have the worst luck with lav mics i have broken every single lav mic or yeah. it doesn't work i'm just like cursed i just ha I've, I've decided i'm just not dealing with them anymore when i go and i work with like a a, a pro in a pro setup and they have it it always works but it never yeah. works and I've, i bought like xlr into my zoom h6 i've bought yeah. um, little little ones right into the camera yeah. it's like bub kiss i just bought it <laughs> and, and then i for i forget i have bad luck and then a year later i'll buy another one and it yeah. won't work or it'll break instantly so the good news is that I, cheap, got, but... yeah yeah the good news is they're cheap but then i'm just like annoyed and i yeah. and so i have um i have uh, when i use that 11 to 22 when i have it at 11 yeah. um and the shotgun mic is on my base my place is not acoustically treated but it's carpeted and i got all yeah. this garbage on the wall so yeah. it's like it's okay in terms yeah. of that um so that shotgun mic seems to pick me up all right and then for the bass one yeah. of my podcast sponsors is uh the nadine ear trumpet labs oh. and so i got this sweet mic and like i'm a classical level bass player i don't need yeah. a like a nice mic but but i i they sent me one to try out and I, and I thought wait a minute this is clearly way better than yeah. anything i own so so now i've been using that and that's actually been fun I, I don't really teach, but I do have two private students that have been Zoom lessoning through the pandemic, just so I don't feel like a total fraud. I like yes. to have a couple students, sure. and 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 they were like, "Whoa, what happened to your sound?" Wow. So so yeah. I use that plugged in, but it's been really fun to so so that's been a good option for the bass. Usually, I would just use the the H six with the mm -hmm. mic capsule up top, which is fine too. Yeah. But yeah, if I since I have the Nadine, it's like I, I nice. use that, and it's it's it's, uh, it's, it's good to have yeah, it's good to have that mic that you know is like gonna gonna do the job for you that's good well i'm trying to figure out for when it when someday there will be some day that i leave my condo i that day hasn't arrived yet yeah. uh, that base has not left that corner in <laughs> over a year but yeah. i know it'll happen and i know i'll be I'm, I'm theoretically going to texas uh in in the next couple months but so i'm trying to figure out my i'm also so i'm into into camera gear i uh, probably too much given the level at which i can do things and then i'm also like into travel bags so i'm trying to like okay. figure out what do i need because because when I go out of town, I like to be able to do podcast interviews. So yeah. I have that H6 and yeah. a couple mics. Yeah. And then I need a couple XLR cables. So that's yeah. like this wad of material. Yeah. Then I have my camera. And then I want to be able to like do vloggy stuff. So I have the mic. Yeah. And then I, I think I'll probably bring, I might just bring my 22 millimeter lens and my 11 to 22. And I think I might be good. These are the things that I talk about with my wife and she just get, totally <laughs> zones out. So yeah, I never get to have this conversation yeah. <laughs> with anybody who cares. <laughs> you know. But um, so I'm trying to figure out like, but then I also have to bring clothes and then yeah. possibly a bow and yeah. and carry it. So that's up quick. yeah, these are the things that keep me up. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's maybe it's good that that's the biggest worry on my mind. But. <laughs> yeah, it could be a lot worse. That's for sure. Yeah. What what are I, you doing in terms of edit? What are you doing in terms of editing? Are you using a uh, Final Cut or Premiere or DaVinci Resolve? Oh, you're using Resolve. Okay, cool. Yeah, I had a, I had a friend recommend it to me like back in like September October. I started thinking about doing this and. And one of the first things I did was call a friend who knew something about cameras and knew something about video editing. And mm -hmm. 
you know, my first video came out in like February, like early February. So it took that long for me to make one, you know, and in hindsight, maybe, maybe I could have, you know, just thrown something together and put it out earlier. But it, to me, it was important to kind of like, I, I'm always this kind of way. I'm like, a, um, I get a little bit too thorough sometimes. And so like, I always want to do everything, like learn everything before I even attempt it once, you know, but he turned me on to DaVinci Resolve, which I couldn't recommend enough. I'm a Windows user mm -hmm. and it's just like the, the free version of it. You think like, oh, free, all, all the stuff that you need is gated behind it like no like i've never run into the paywall for it actually i did once for a certain effect and then i just googled like how do i make this effect on my own and there's a, there's a video for everything it's crazy there's like one youtube channel in particular that like has just taught me everything that i needed to know about editing and it's just like you, you run into a problem you're like how do i how do i get you know this how do i get this look on a shot you know and then you just type that in there's like this is four minute video this guy's like okay so first you gotta do this it's just like all out there for you it's an incredible resource so that worked out really well for me and hardware wise i never had to i upgraded my ram mm -hmm. because you know I, I i could and i thought maybe that was a bit of a bottleneck but you know my my pc right now is about four or five years old and i figure you know it's still running great otherwise so i was like i'm not gonna like buy a whole new pc when this thing's still running well so maybe just some extra ram i have 32 gigs of ram now will nice. care of what i need but 32 is like way more than you'd ever need but video editing apparently is great oh it's yeah. rough well my 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 uh my uh purchase after we had this base summit last year and after that my i was like all right my reward for doing this thing that was like june is what i'm talking to you on now which is a 2020 macbook pro like as specced out as you can get yeah, nice. and i got I, I intentionally got the the i got the 16 inch intentionally because it has a dedicated graphics card and i was hitting the thing where i start to do anything yeah, in terms of uh, on a video and i yeah. on my old i had a 2015 macbook pro not yeah. that old but it it was like i would render out in premiere and it'd say like yeah. i was like an eight minute video would be like 18 hours to yeah go. And like yeah 18 hours yeah, and that went from that. like 18 yeah. hours yeah it went from 18 hours to like seven minutes with yeah. this thing so um but i've heard great things about davinci resolve that's a great way for folks to i've been recommending that even though i've never used it and i think that it's it's kind of like an it's it's their excuse to get you into the i believe the black magic universe because i think yeah. that they're black magic cameras if i'm remembering right are yeah. it's the same company I yeah think. it is yeah like every time you load up the the software there's like a loading screen with like some little advertisement for like one of their cameras or one of their like mm -hmm. editing consoles or whatever it is you know like it's definitely their way to i've actually thought about buying the the pro version just because like i'm so happy with it that it's kind of just like yeah. you know next time i do run into something i'm not gonna have to worry about that and there's also one thing that it does have that i don't really have is that you can render in the h.265 codec which is supposed to look a little bit better for you know when, when things get compressed for youtube i saw one video that was like oh yeah this this will make things look better but that's behind the paywall but um i don't know like i don't you know like like you said earlier like you know the camera isn't this thing that you know that is that is holding me back like you know the codec that i'm rendering in is not the thing that's holding me back so like i, I can't really justify it yeah yeah it's funny it's like it, that that's a line you know that i i certainly use a lot the gear is not holding you back but some gear does hold you yeah. back i think that's because i was trying i thought oh, i want to do some youtube videos so i broke out my phone and i shot and i was like these look terrible and <laughs> i was like i have a contemporary iphone but these look terrible yeah. and then i i had this zoom q8 i believe this little uh little it looks like an old 80s camcorder yeah, yeah. and it it's great for certain use cases, yeah. but oh my goodness, the video, it's like worse than that Canon yeah. two megapixel yeah. Pixma that I used back in the mid 2000s. Yeah, and so I finally, yeah. yeah, I finally, I think Think Media was the channel that yeah. I got sucked into the, the yeah. M50. Have you, um, speaking of editing channels on YouTube, have you checked out how to edit stuff from Naughty and Sands? No, I haven't come across that one. That is a good one. He's really into the Adobe world, so it might okay. not be as interesting. Although he does yeah. talk about, he, I was just watching a video last night on color grading in uh -huh. DaVinci Resolve versus yeah. uh, Lumetri in, in okay. Premiere. So yeah. um, well, how, how uh how about your the graphics and stuff that you've built are can you do that at all in resolve too is yeah i did all that in resolve yeah wow yeah okay, cool. yeah there's a channel this guy named casey ferris has a video for like every possible use thing that you would ever need in davinci resolve and there the davinci resolves like graphics thing is called fusion and oh, I yeah fusion. yeah okay. and it's yeah, yeah. it's like it's just kind of obtuse interface you work with nodes and all that stuff but once you get the hang of it it's not that bad and it, you know you can you can kind of latch on 
quickly. And like, I, especially the stuff, you know, there's some tracking stuff in it where like I, in my first video that I came out with, there's some stuff where it was like, one of the label, the sides of the bow, the faces of the bow around the stick. And I remember it's like, how am I going to show them that? And you can just like, the software does this thing where you'd be like, follow this thing and it'll follow it and so it glued this text onto the side of the boat i was just turning around i was like wow like i'm getting this for free like i feel like it's not i don't understand how that's possible but it was like it was really cool wow well i was so curious what you were using just because i was like all right i was like jonathan's youtube game is strong right out of the gate like 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 i think that waiting until you have some skills you know i mean there there are two sides to that court the one 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 group of people would say like just put out stuff and who cares if it's terrible and you'll get better over yeah. time um but i think especially those those people like, I mean, the evidence that you have a professional job is, you know, shows that you've got follow through. And, and so that that's a sort of, I think people who get to that level in terms of something else, they, they often like to have a certain level of expertise before they start putting stuff out. Yeah, you know. I, it's kind of how I am. I just, I can't, I can't help it. I, I don't, I don't want to put something out there that like, I don't feel confidently about. You know, it's just kind of how I am. And, and so like at the same time, you know, the people who say like, just put stuff out there, I think that that works more for people who can like turn a video out in a day, you know, where the content that they're talking about is maybe something that is easy to easy to talk about or, or there's like, you know, it, it's maybe a little bit less production quality in terms of like, you know, what uh, you're trying to talk about like for for example like uh, a, a video about how to hold the bow like took me like a long time just to come up with like a script and how i was going to plan things out and scenes and all that stuff like i can't turn those out like at a, at a high clip you know i'm way faster at them now than it was like the first one took me months because like oh my god just like the, the amount of <laughs> the amount of like shots where I was like, what's my background going to be? It took me forever to do, you know, like uh, and lighting, yeah. learning how to light things. Ugh. And then like monitoring, like I was constantly like, I would film something. And then I was like, I need to look at this on my computer screen to see what this actually looks like. And you you learn that you're underexposed the hard way. And then you're like, okay, now I got to like put the camera back together, put it back on the tripod, film again, and then take out the SD card, all this stuff. So like, it, it was just like such a hassle of moving all these lights around and all that stuff. It took me forever to kind of get a scene that I liked. And then I was also learning like, oh, like, yeah, now I can figure I turn the camera. I'm like, what am I gonna say? And and like, how am I gonna? You know, like, I spend I spend just as much time writing down a script and pl planning out like the the flow of the video as I do actually filming it and editing it. You know, because th that to me is like just as important. So like to me, it was just like I'd rather I'd rather like get all those things right instead of just like throw things out there because I, I I'm the kind of perfectionist where it's like if I put something out there that I think could have been better, I'm gonna want to do it again. But like that, you don't want to do that on YouTube. You don't want to like you know take videos down or, or redo them you know so it's like i haven't do this right yeah for a long time yeah you, yeah, you kind of can't it's in, in, in a way i mean you can theoretically but it's it's in a way i sort of like that because it's like yeah. once it's out there it's set in stone and even if i like i i screwed up this i'm not a perfectionist uh but i but i've been thinking about all the sort of things that you're th that you're thinking about and i had at this my latest video i forgot to like have the i have i had my iphone huh. above me to show the book i'm looking at and then the a roll the camera on my face and i forgot to like i started on the table <laughs> like a dumb way to start i'm like instead of my face and then I, I didn't realize my mistake until i'd already uploaded it, but i was like all right jason you you have i i, I have so much on my plate and again that's yeah. a sort of a good problem to have during a pandemic but I'm like, it's like yeah. i can only give this so much time and it's only going to be um and so uh that, that, that lighting and stuff it's it's funny because i moved i i uh i was starting to get lenses and get more serious about YouTube in summer of 2019. And then my n travel life and what I typically do in non pandemic mm -hmm. times kicked in yeah. and I quit doing it. And then, and then the pandemic hit and I, I all of a sudden thought, well, yeah. I guess I got time now I'll start again, but I, for, I I'd yeah. forgotten how to use everything. And so my first video, <laughs> I looked like a ghost. I'm so overexposed. Like I had, and then I, I, we moved into this place right here, which had, uh, not one item in it. So my first video in this place yeah. is like a blank room and this place has this hilarious lighting situation where there's tons of light coming in yeah. from one side and then it's really dark and so it's just a very challenging and it's right. not huge it's san francisco so um but i have an elgato okay. key light right here uh -huh. and then i've got a ring light right here yeah. and that seems to be good enough and then i've got uh phillips hue light so i've yeah. created like a couple colors and then i got this one little like practical light i think they call it you know that, oh, that yeah, sure. i can take yeah, on the road for a little yeah. bit of lighting but also yeah. i just well, I, 
Yeah, but I'm bad at that too. Like I had one video where I forgot to charge it and it starts and it's on and then within the first five seconds it flickers and it's just like off. And that's in the well, final like, video. But, you know, like, oh I, think, well. I think you were saying about like, oh, you started that video with like a shot of the table. Like, you know, I think I would rather be where you are with that in terms of like perfectionism because it would mean that I would put out things a lot more quickly, you know? But like, I, I'm just like, I, I, I get, I get way too caught up in, in those kinds of details. I think to my detriment, to be honest, like, you know, I think there's maybe, maybe like a, a healthy amount of like, okay, you want to put your best foot forward, but, but so when it becomes like, everything's got to be like really perfect in this box, then it, then it can really slow you down, I think. Well, it's tough. Like my rule, this is, this is absolutely non-scientific, but my rule of thumb, because I've done a lot of blogging, I've done a lot of podcasting, and then I've done enough video to kind of, you know, at least have some experience. And it's like, well, audio takes 10 times the work mm. of a blog post uh, so a podcast will take 10 times the work maybe not exactly because sometimes i make more elaborate blog posts or i have really simple audio but then and i absolutely think that video takes 10 times the podcast because podcast you can get to pretty good real easy on audio like you know we're talking yeah. video just because we're yeah, humans yeah. and it's nice to see you but we we don't need you know i don't i don't have to worry about yeah. framing and i turn on yeah. the lights just so i'm not a good like a shadowy figure but but um you know it doesn't matter yeah. it's easy to edit it, it, even if the even if the person's just talking on their phone or whatever it's like good enough as long as you can be yeah. comprehensible to like be acceptable but then you get into video and it's everything you're talking about lighting and yeah. then like scripting is a big old thing like what the hell like how 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 do you approach that do you like sit down and write paragraphs so you're writing bullet points do you are you looking at something do you have like some sort of uh no, phone I, hidden away I, somewhere I, or like I'm, how I'm are you still, doing that? i should preface everything i have to say with i'm still figuring this stuff out i mean i've only made a few videos so like i'm by no means settled on a, a certain method or know how to do it best but um i uh what i do is i like writing and i and i do it for the orchestra a fair amount and so what i usually start with is like I just throw a bunch of ideas down, you know, and then what I do is mm -hmm. I, I try to tie it to like, I looked into like storyboarding tools, but like they, they seem too ridiculous to me. So I just open, I have a Google Sheets, like, like an Excel spreadsheet where what I do is I say, okay, here's what I'm going to say. And I'm going to call this scene number one for filing purposes. So like, you know, when I actually turn on my camera and say, okay, I'm doing scene number one and I can check that off. And then I, what I had to learn was, this is, this is kind of parallel to your question, but what I had to learn was that when I filmed the scene and I liked what I got, I I have to write down the camera settings that I used and I take a picture of my setup of where exactly everything was so that, you know, if I go to edit it later and it's like, oh shit, I need to like do that again. I, uh, I have those settings down. So I, you know, I, so that goes in the spreadsheet too. And I kind of briefly describe like, okay, I'm sitting in front of this tree or I'm demonstrating this thing or this B-roll is depicting this thing. And what I had to do, what I had to learn how to do was like, okay, you have to have, you can't obviously shoot everything in one take just because you can't memorize everything. So like you have to plan like transitions between scenes you have to make sure that like whatever you end with flows into whatever you start with in the next scene and that like you know it would be good to like if you had some b-roll or some you know way of of covering up the the jump cut because like you know that's like you know that, and it's another one of those examples of the perfectionistic thing in me where it's like I want to avoid the jump cuts as much as possible where jump cuts being, for anybody who doesn't know, like, been like, there's no, you know, and nothing else in the scene changes, but like, you can see that like, I went from one take to another, you know, and like, you just kind of, <laughs> you know, people do that all the time. Everybody's used to it. And like, for some reason, for me, when I go back and watch my other videos, I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to see it. And like, I, I, it's terrible. It's so unnecessary. It's so unnecessary. You're, you're yeah, I am. life so much harder. <laughs> it's, it's cool. It, it is kind of an, it, it, it's one of those things that annoyed me when I first saw it on YouTube yeah, and it's just done so know. frequently that I just like I, I decided yeah I, I I've I've fully embraced it but I, that's a that is a valiant yeah. uh, I'm, I'm gonna, and, and sure. like I'll, I'll start I'll start doing them less uh, I mean I'll, I'll or rather I'll start doing them more I'll, I'll start using them more and there, there are kind of ways to like I, I remember looking into it. there's kind of ways to mask them if you like zoom in and zoom out during the jump cut it helps kind of like mm -hmm. reduce that but anyway so like you know I had to strategize like okay I'm gonna say these things and then you know scene 1a is gonna be this b-roll that's gonna play at the end of it and I'm gonna voice over this thing and I just have to plan every single thing out because when I first started you know back uh in 2020 like at the end of 2020 and I was feeling some things I remember like the first thing I was doing was like I would just turn my camera on and I was like trying to film like what it would look like to see like my thumb on the back of the bow and I was like okay I'm gonna need this eventually you know whatever and then like months later being like you know I was experimenting I was learning how to use the camera so there's there was a in it, but it was also like I was just kind of blindly filming things hoping that like things would come together you know so the scripting process for me mm -hmm. what I ended up doing is I I, I write it all out 
And then I don't read off of it while I shoot. And, and I don't memorize the words verbatim. I just like, I have the scripts and I'm like, okay, these are the things I'm talking about. And then like, I have to rehearse it like a lot of times, you know, it takes a while to kind of, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny. Like I get like performance anxiety speaking into a camera, you know, like where I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, weird. Where I'm like, weird. I'm like in the middle of a take yeah. and I'm like, I'm, I'm saying the right things. Like this is going well, like just finish it strong. Like you got this, you know, it's like a, like a, like a 20 second thing of like a few sentences you know but yeah it's kind of hard you know and to like memorize what you're going to say say it clearly and say it with like animation and and you know speaking to a camera convincingly and i i think i'm getting better at it I'm so happy that my course, Beginners Classical Bass, is out in the world on Discover Double Bass, and we've been getting some great feedback. Here's Barry Green, instructor of bass at The Ohio State University, former principal bassist of the Cincinnati Symphony and author of The Inner Game of Music. Barry writes about the course. This wonderful, extensive course includes 14 chapters of 66 lessons, varying in length from one to eight minutes each. It is so comprehensive. While it is called a beginner's course, this only means that the course begins with the parts of the instrument, including how to take the bass out of the case. However, it also takes the player through the most advanced left and right hand techniques, including shifting, pivoting, harmonics, positions up to the thumb position, tuning the bass, scales and arpeggios, as well as left hand techniques of dynamics, bow placement, articulations, including portato, staccato, and slurring. Barry, thank you so much. And folks, if you haven't checked it out, you can find it through the link in the show notes or just visit discoverdoublebass.com slash Jason Heath. Here's Mark Gelfel from Modacity on the concept of integration practice. After you practice, you want to take some quiet time, maybe lay down in constructive rest or in a way that's restful to your body and allow your mind and your body to actually process what you just learned so that it becomes part of you. An integration practice can look like asking yourself, well, what was the most important point, point of that practice session? Or what was the high point? What am I most grateful for? What did I really learn? What do I want to visualize myself taking forward? When you do that day in, day out, it's going to compound and create dramatic acceleration to your learning. You can learn more about my favorite practice app and get a special deal on lifetime membership by visiting modacity.co slash CBC. And thank you, Modacity, for sponsoring the podcast. A few, para yeah, a few parallels yeah. to bass playing, right? A lot of bass playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah very similar, absolutely. right? Absolutely. At least for me, like reco recording, recording yourself. Like I feel so similar to like recording myself uh, yeah. uh, for my bass playing, you know, like yeah. for, like getting something ready. I'm so used to the yeah. way I talk now on video. It's like, I'm, I'm just sort of, a, or audio, I'm like, immune yeah. to the sound of my own voice yeah. you know how cringy it is at first and then it's like or, or when you record yeah. you start to get into recording you're like oh yeah i yeah. played brahms too like yeah. that but then at a certain that's point it. you're just like that's me yeah, and you know, i can yeah, hear it getting it. better so. yeah I, and i had to i had to learn like okay you gotta know your own limitations and, and only give yourself like three or four sentences at a time to record you know because like you're not gonna remember all that stuff mm -hmm. and i ran into that problem with my most recent video which is about um you know how to use the bow and like how certain variables affect your sound and like I had some it was a much longer video than I planned on it being and I had some like really long scenes in there where like I wasted like 30 minutes trying to get this one take of you know demonstrating where on the string you should be putting your bow because I had some examples I did a little bit of playing in the middle of it and there were all these times where like I got the words done really well and then I was going to play like the opening of Beethoven 5 trio or a scherzo and then I would be like I didn't like the way that came out you know <laughs> just to say it all over again you know I was like oh god it would be a real real pain in the neck sometimes I, Yep. I like coming up with videos. I like editing videos. Shooting videos is kind of like, it's a lot of work. You know, the lighting and everything, it's like, it's yeah. a lot of, you know, you're a stagehand, you're a, you gotta make sure your hair is right. I can't tell you how many times I, I had to throw out a take because like my hair was like doing one of like, I don't know, it's something crazy. Like usually it's back here, you, it's something yeah. sticking up. <laughs> I have a couple of great videos. I, I I generally don't care. I got the, sli the, the same hairstyle I've had yeah. since I was 16. So, uh, but, but I, but I, I, my wife and I went down. I, I generally don't do this for podcasts or videos, but but it was a Friday afternoon, and I, I said, Jason, you got to film some stuff. I hadn't filmed anything this week, so I set all my gear up. And I was like, I'm going to feel yeah. so guilty if I if I come home and I don't. Ha and so, but we but it was a nice day, and so we went over to the pier. There's this little bar on nice. the on the waterfront, yeah. and I had a couple beers <laughs> with my wife. Came back, I was like, oh, I got to film some stuff. So I filmed some stuff, and my yeah. hair. I haven't put them out. I, I don't even know if I'm going to. So I both had. 
had a couple of beers and my hair is insane. And it's like such a yeah. departure. I just always wear yeah. like the black Under Armour shirt. Yeah. So if I, it's a sweaty day or whatever, it doesn't matter. But but these are hilarious. I'm like in a Hawaiian yeah. shirt or something with my hair crazy and a little, a little, a little off. So we'll see if I end up using them. <laughs> Well, you know what I've started to do, um, and I, who knows, because as life gets more back to normal, this sort of stuff takes a ton of time. I have not broken my streak of one video a week for the past year, but oh my goodness, when I was, when I, I might have to go down to one, I, I don't know what will happen. I, it's, I certainly, the, my, my, uh, certainly my yeah. income is not coming from YouTube, let's just say, and, and the amount of time it takes to do anything. But one time-saving thing I have been doing just for me and what I do is I, I, I have like, mm -hmm. I come up with like five ideas. And I sit down and I film all mm. the A roll for f all five and I film all the B roll for all five and I film all the bass playing for all wow. five and I dump on my computer and then someday I just open them up and, and I make sure I, I've gotten my organizational system down, which is important. So I know like what's where, like, where's the, yeah. where's the audio, Jeez. where's the, the, and, and, and I even film a little bit of stuff for the thumbnails, yeah. you know, so I just have it all ready to go. And then I sit down and that seems to work for me. I just like take two hours and do all the, that yeah. stuff. And I write down and for scripting, I played around with a lot of things. I, mm -hmm. these days I do bullet points and I have it on my iPad yeah. in front of it. So if I'm talking at my yeah. table over here, it's just there. I don't care about jump cuts. So I look, and if it's fact, if it's, if it's opinion, yeah. it's real bullet points. It's not much. If it is like base history or, or something where I really want to get the details, right. I write the entire thing. Oh, yeah. out. Like I research it, write it all out. And then I, I do like bonkers. I like, say one or two sentences and then like look down pause one or two sentences and i know i'm going to jump cut edit them all and i know that most of the time it's going to be cutting yeah, away yeah. from me so it doesn't even matter and that yeah. works well for these like yeah. base history things um so uh -huh. uh, so that's been my system for better or worse and i'm still working on it but that has that has saved me a lot of time because it's like Ugh, i don't want to get you know like get I, all I, should, the I, I should go i should get more used to the idea of just turning on the camera and talking into it and like like knowing that like the things that I want to say are going to come out the way that I want them to and like instead of like by the time I turn on the camera I've already like spent so much time like crafting all these words and stuff and, and, and I think you know I, I think by the time I actually do film it you know I am kind of I'm speaking off the cuff but like I am speaking more naturally the way you speak and the way you write are two different completely different things you know? yeah I think yeah. I feel less burned out when I do that because what I usually do is I come up with all that stuff like in a different time of the week and then it'll be like oftentimes it's a Monday or a Friday I don't know why but yeah. I'll be like all right it's camera day and I yeah. I just pull all the gear out yeah, and yeah. I'll feel guilty if I don't do it. Move my lights yeah. from this desk to that table no. and, you know, get out the extension cord. And, and then, and then I, and then I usually like eat lunch or something, you know, and then I just like film and I, I'm in like a good mood, but yeah, I've had a hard time. I have done some, I'll, I'll, I'll get an idea and I've really not done that many where I put like really tried to light a wall. I've probably only done like, I don't know, 30 or something. Cause a lot of the ones I did during the pandemic were like a GoPro on my head or something like that, that, <laughs> that no production <laughs> value at all. Um, and, and, uh, but I don't know that, that batching seems to work well for me. That's what I do with podcasts too. Like today I'm doing doing four hours of interviews wow. and then I won't do any for a long time. Well, it's, 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 I, I like, I'm a person, yeah, I like sure. to be in yeah. a mode, you know, like base, yeah. base playing. I do a little bit every day. Um, un unless yeah. I, yeah, I'm out of town or something weird happens, but like for projects like video, I try, I try to batch it and I'm trying to get better at like realizing what's going to be a lot of work. Like I just did this thing. It's up on YouTube. It's ready for Tuesday, but yeah. it's just about killed me this week. It was, I, I reviewed these base duets. It was something like oh, cool. 25 new bass duets. And I thought, okay, well, I'll play the yeah. first eight bars of every yeah. duet. I'll get a camera of me and that. And I'll, I'll, I'll take some nice photos of the music. I'll kind of like have the yeah. it move across the music and I'll, I'll talk through the piece. So I'm like sight reading it. So all that filming wasn't actually that much work, but then I was like, oh my goodness, I have like 150 a little yeah. items I have to assemble. And it was like, the audio. oh, <laughs> it was, how have you, have you tried to figure out how much, how many hours you're sinking into any one video i mean for me it's the minimum oh, yeah. is yeah. 10 hours even i mean it depends on the video like um my first one 
My first one doesn't count because I was learning everything for the first time. So I, I don't think I'm going to exaggerate when I say I think I put like 100 hours into my first one because like I, all, all those, all those graphics, sure. all the scripting, if you throw in all like the times I spent trying to come on the scene and the lighting and everything else. And I, I had to end up filming things like 100 times mm -hmm. because, you know, I just, I didn't really know how to monitor for exposure and lighting. And sometimes I would look at a take and be like, oh, this is way too close to my face or whatever. Right. So like that one took forever. I, I've been thinking about it more in days because, like, you know, my life right now the orchestra I, I don't play very often with the orchestra right now so, you know i have like whole days to devote to things so like one of the most editing heavy projects was the daft punk thing that i made where i i probably did it the wrong way i i, I synced all the audio in davinci resolve and i like i layered it up all in there i have ableton live as well i probably could have done it in there and just put an audio track with all the video but that's how i ended up doing it but like that took me that took me like two and a half days like full days where i was like you know because I had the time and I, I was having a lot of fun with it too that's why I was able to do it like all day that, that took me like two and a half days the the latest two Bohold Basics videos that I've done have been like three days or four days each and, and that's less editing and more like getting the right take getting the right scripting down I think the reason I'm spending so much time on the scripting and stuff is because uh, you know these videos these educational ones especially like I, I'm really planning on them being a resource for like a really long time and I really want them to be like effective for you know like beginner kids so like i really want to make sure that the language is like accessible for kids and teachers and like i have a lot more experience with like i do some teaching artist things with the orchestra and i've done a lot of i spent a lot of time thinking about like developing presentations for classrooms and so like i kind of approached it from that like be really deliberate about the language i think with other things that i'm going to do in the future it's going to be a lot easier i can be a lot, a lot more fluid so i think that's part of the reason why I've, I've spent so much time on the scripting side of things but i'm getting faster every time you know like i, I know exactly how to set everything up now i know what to look for in a scene i know like how to do everything after this i'm gonna go to the hall i've got crazy it's it's getting way too out of control but i got this crazy crazy ideas for a video about for, for a video about addressing like intonation anxiety and performances and i have all these plans for like filming b-roll where like i'm going to act out as like an audition person like pushing a pencil and then like another person back there like not paying attention and then like me on stage like all this crazy stuff that's gonna not gonna work i don't think but it'll be fun we'll see that's awesome. <laughs> and, and I'm having a lot of fun. But yeah, it takes me you know, 10 hours. You know, it's probably taking me like 30 hours per video right now. But it's getting yeah. faster. And, yeah. and it's also just like the nature of the, the content I think I'm, I'm trying to make right now. Yeah, hopefully, uh, when, when things go back to normal, whenever that is. Because right now, I'm playing with the orchestra like once a month on average, which is like nothing. It's like two or three services. Mm -hmm. Once things go back to normal, like I'm not going to have the time to, to be putting into those videos. You know, I'm going to lose momentum. Like so much of this is dependent on like having the momentum where you can devote hours of your day to just like figuring the stuff out and, and kind of like shedding it, you know. But if, if I only have like an hour every other day to do this, it's it's going to be really tough to kind of get that momentum. Yeah. Well, I was curious how how you might think this will integrate. Like if you go down the road, hopefully yeah. sooner than two years, but let's just say two years, you know, and 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 things are pretty much like 2019. Um, like do you, like how do you see? I, I would assume you want to keep doing this because you're. Obviously Obviously really into it like you're going to the hall you're going to film a whole bit like like it's a really cool thing and there's nothing but net for like like it's like a a whole wild chunk of skills that you can use or just have fun with in your life no matter how but i i love what you're putting together like Thanks. do you um do you are you are you thinking ahead in terms of like uh when you don't have like you know a full-time yeah. job's worth of time you know to, i think it really depends on like what's what i'm gonna end up making you know like right now i'm starting out with these educational things and i and i really want that resource out there because i'm really passionate about education but like you know I, i'm gonna start experimenting more too you know and like i said i'm gonna make a video about like performance anxiety that's that's gonna reach i think a broader audience because it's not gonna be so bass specific you know my bow videos right now are like french double bass bow things you know it's, it's very narrow right yeah and so, um, you know, when, I'm going to start experimenting more and I'm going to see what catches on. I'm going to see what people want to, want to see from what I can make. And, you know, so I don't, I don't really know what I'm going to be making in two years, but I definitely plan on continuing to make things because, yeah, I am having a lot of fun with it. And who knows, man, you know, I, I also want to do stuff maybe more with my orchestra, help, you know, get more people in the hall. Like I, maybe I can use these skills for that. You know, that's something I spent a lot of time thinking about. So who knows? Hopefully, you know, the orchestra life 
life, the, the, the daily grind of an, a professional job and, and this new uh, video making stuff, hopefully they can like mesh really well together. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. It's, well, I hope so too, because I love what you're doing. And, and if uh, ho hopefully it goes without saying, but if you got any collab yeah, yeah. ideas or anything, I'm all ears. I'm I'm having fun with this <laughs> with this garbage fire of my YouTube channel that I've had for you. And it's funny, I've I've made some, I've uh, you can obviously rebrand yourself or do whatever, but I've got this bait, you know, I'm so in the base world with what I do. I, I, I made the, I don't know if it's an unfortunate decision, but I made a couple of videos during the pandemic that got pretty popular that are nothing to do with base. And so every time I open up my comments, I got one that's got like 45, 50,000 mm -hmm. views about, about audio gear. And, yeah. and it's like, it's like, I have so many, <laughs> like these real persnickety comments about like, you know, uh, yeah, why'd yeah. you feel it that way? So I just have to like let that, that video it has a life of its own and it will just do its own thing. I got a other couple like that. I know so that problem I, that you're I, describing I, though, like, yeah. you know, when you, <laughs> when you hit a success with something and people start following me for that, then it's like, oh, like, do, do I have to keep putting that out there now? You know, I, I just, you know. Yeah. The answer is what are you trying to do? You know, like, like, are you trying to build a business with it? Are you trying to, cause, yeah. cause, you, and, and that's part of the flexibility of YouTube. I love, yeah. like you could rebrand your channel to do whatever. And yeah. I think you're, you're just using your own name if I remember right, which is a smart way to do it. Um, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a really flexible medium and, and those, those skills that are such cool skills that yeah. they're, they're so transferable over yeah. whether transferable, whatever the word is to <laughs> whether it's French double boat base bow technique or or audition anxiety or or uh we're uh, helping uh, spread the word about projects your orchestra is doing so Thanks. it's i yeah. i love it keep keep sure. it up it's really yeah. it's really great stuff yeah yeah well it's one of those emails that i got i think i think you sent me an email and i like clicked on this <laughs> video i'm like oh whoa this is good this is like good 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 out of the gate so and, and i i just never i never get to have a nerdy youtube conversation with anybody just because it's not you know most musicians i know they're just like dumping their live performances up there or they're um but it has been fun to see more let's just call it like youtube style uh educational yeah. content like joe khan uses watching his stuff was really where I, I kind of was like, I was watching what he was doing. And I was like, I kind of want to do that too. Like, like I'm, I kind of feel like I'm, yeah, I'm following yeah, in his no, footsteps. I was so happy know? to see that. I'm like, Joe's a YouTuber now. Yeah. That's awesome. And then, and uh, Paul, uh, Paul Thompson, I don't know if you've checked out his stuff. No, I haven't. PD Bass is his okay. YouTube channel. Outstanding. He had a video that Will Lee, the you know, from the, the late show, Dave Letterman, Will Lee, I think retweeted it. And it got like, I think it's got like a hundred thousand views now, but he's like wow. started YouTubing during the pandemic really yeah. great guy he lives in pittsburgh plays mostly jazz teaches a lot right. um and and he has these great like historical deep dives and i found out about his channel because i put together a uh, 10 of my favorite youtube base double base youtubers and i like was stretching to think of 10 um, <laughs> uh, before you put out your first video i think yeah. and then someone said have you checked out paul's stuff and yeah. i i clicked on it and i was uh -huh. like oh this is amazing so yeah. there are enough of us doing this yeah. there's got to be some sort of cool collab so if I you have any so, ideas yeah. that at any point i, uh, I will let surely, me know. yeah a, absolutely yeah cool definitely thanks for chatting man this of is course. great thanks for I having really me on it. I feel, yeah, like I, I feel like I've made it. I finally, I'm on a, I'm on a controversial <laughs> conversations, you know? <laughs> this has been around for so long. I, I'm pretty sure you were doing this back when I was in high school. So it's cool. It's so great that oh. you're still doing this and that, like, and now I get to be on it. It's like on the other side. It's cool. <laughs> well, it's a fun, I mean, the fun thing with a podcast is it's, it's a, it's a nice excuse to just hang out with somebody for a while. And, I, and, 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 and so it's the sort of thing, like, I would want to do this anyway, even if I didn't have the recorder going, you know, it'd be fun to just, like, yeah. and, and so it's, it's kind of a nice side benefit. And it's been, I have no idea how I ended up doing this. It's just like a totally random thing, but, yeah. but it's been, it's been a fun aspect of my life. And so that's, I, I, it's, and it's so much easier than putting these YouTube videos together. So like, <laughs> I, I also wonder what's going to happen when I get more back to regular life. I might mm -hmm. just start putting out one a month or maybe I'll hire somebody to do uh, some of the some of the grunt work. But I, yeah. I may we'll see. I don't know. I do like I like the idea of putting out something weekly and I have been doing that. But I also know that that is absolutely impossible when I'm on the road. Like yeah. and it's just the one man band on YouTube. Well, it's, it's a great resource. Too, it, but, it's a great resource. Yeah. Like I've listened to like interviews that you've done with some players that I really admire and then like, like um, Alex Hanna for instance like him talking about his approach to auditioning and stuff is like a really great resource for me to listen to because you know that's something I'm still doing and um, you know on your YouTube channel like I have all my all my uh, students go through progressive rep and like they're watching your videos of you of, 
of those pieces, you know, like that's the, those, those, are, are, those are reference recordings for them. Well, there's a, well, thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And yeah. those, are, those videos I find hilarious because they're a total example of scratching your own itch. I had a student that was wa- trying to work on one of those pieces. Yeah. And the only thing I could find was some like blurry 11 yeah. year old playing the piece. Not very well. And I was yeah. like, okay, why are there not videos of these pieces? And there if, you, if you watch, well, if you watch closely, the first two volumes, you'll notice I'm wearing a lapel mic, but I say no words because <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah. I didn't know if I, I was going to teach them or if I was just going to, I think I tried to teach through them. And then I, and then they were like, I, it was literally a, one day I was like, all right, why? I like, I think I came home from the lesson and I just yeah. filmed all of the first two books. Like my sneakers are in the back. Yeah. My, you know, and, and, and then I realized, oh, the third volume's hard. I should probably like actually practice. And then it, it took me like two years to do this, you know, <laughs> get back to it and do it. Yeah. So thank you for sending people to that. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they found it and they're like, is this a good recording? And I'm like, yeah, that's great. That's perfect. Like, that's a great way for you to, that's a great way for you to like, hear the piece, you know, make sure you're playing in the room. Jonathan, I love what you're doing. Folks, check him out. His website is jonathanborden.com. YouTube channel is linked up and you can get to it from his website. Follow him on Instagram. We got that in the show notes as well. The first of many conversations, I am sure, with Jonathan. Thank you for listening. Oh, what to say for these outros, which I try not to edit. I am doing the fourth of four of these episodes. I always sit down uh, with rare exceptions and do four of these intros, outros. So that means I'm doing eight of these little reads before and after the podcast. It's funny. They're probably the least important part of the episode, but they take they don't even take that much thought because I'm, I'm sort of reading from the, the show notes when I'm doing these, but the, I'm always like, got to read the intros and outros for the podcast. For some reason, they're harder for me to do than YouTube stuff. And I don't know why that is because audio should be easier than YouTube. Perhaps it's because I I know I just for the way I do YouTube videos, I'm going to edit the heck out of myself. So I'm, I'm expecting to make mistakes. And I'm expecting to do things in chunks. And I think that... I get frustrated. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's that I've also been doing these audio things for so long that is so that if I mess up, I'm, I'm just annoyed. And I love that when I hear bigger podcasts or more mainstream podcasts and sometimes they leave a mess up in there that always makes me happy. I, I listen to the Joe Rogan podcast and, and, and sometimes he'll mess up an ad read and that just sort of makes me happy because <laughs> not, not that I want anyone to mess anything up, but it just makes me know I'm not alone when I, when I mess up. So that's a very rambling way of saying uh, saying nothing, actually. Uh, so maybe I should shut up because uh, I'm just sort of wandering around. All the things, if, uh, join our email newsletter if you're not on there. We've got quite a following there. The Sheet Music Store, which we launched several months ago, is is popping. It's incredible how that has grown and it's gone in directions I never expected. If you haven't checked that out before, doublebaseblog.org slash music will get you there. It's linked up to in the show notes. So whatever you're listening to this on, you can click that. Reach out to me if you got a guess suggestion or any anything or just want to say hi feedback at contrabasedconversations.com will put you in touch with me and thank you to the team that put these together with me they are michael cooper steve hinchy mitch mooring and trevor jones mitch makes beautiful bases in the dallas fort worth area we have a very cool episode coming up soon uh, assuming it, it goes <laughs> and I'm, I'm optimistically assuming that it will it probably will um uh another luthier rant or not rant another multi luthier episode i know that folks have loved that in the past so that'll be really cool uh, regardless check out what mitch does at mitchmooring.com and yeah i'm your host jason heath we'll see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum <laughs>